This video, we'll learn how to use the Angoff method to apply a non-compensatory approach to informing selection decisions. So what is a non-compensatory approach to selection decisions? Well, an entire multi-tool selection system can use a non-compensatory approach to inform selection decisions, or a non-compensatory approach can be applied to one or more hurdles within a multi-hurdle system. A non-compensatory approach refers to the process of setting and applying cutoff scores for selection tools. In doing so, applicants cannot compensate for lower scores on one selection tool with higher scores on one or more other selection tools. Instead, they must pass each cutoff score to move forward in the selection system. Now, at this point, you might be asking, what is a selection tool in this context? Well, these are employee selection tools that we're referring to, and they go by other names such as selection procedures, selection assessment, or selection tests. So an example of a selection tool would be, for example, a cognitive ability test that we give applicants. Another example would be a structured interview or even a work sample. So I just used that term cutoff score. Well, a cutoff score also goes by the names of critical score and cut score. So more simply, we can just call a cutoff score just a cut score. For selection tools that have a multiple choice format, the Angoff method is commonly used to set cutoff scores. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the Angoff method. The Angoff method, which was developed in 1971, is known as a judgmental method as it incorporates the judgments of experts. And here, in this context, we can refer to these experts as subject matter experts. So people who know something about the job that the applicants would be applying to. And we can abbreviate subject matter expert as SME. The method is used to set the minimum performance standards an applicant must meet in order to pass a selection tool. The method can be broken down into five steps, which I'll demonstrate using an example. So for step one, let's imagine we have a selection tool that contains five items, where five items you can think of as being five questions in this context. So for example, you could imagine a selection tool that measures cognitive ability, where each item is a multiple choice question with a single correct answer. So for each item, a subject matter expert or SME is going to estimate the probability that a minimally qualified applicant would provide a correct response to the item. And so here you can see a data table that we're gonna populate. The first column is the subject matter expert's unique identifier. The remaining five columns are each of the five items for this selection tool, and we're going to populate those columns with the estimated probabilities from our subject matter experts. So let's imagine that subject matter expert number one gives the following estimated probabilities that a minimally qualified applicant would provide a correct response to item one, two, three, four, and five. And those estimated probabilities are 0 0.78, 0 0.72, 0 0.67, 0.53 and 0.44 respectively. Now, if you need a refresher on what a probability means, it's really how likely something is or how likely it is that something will occur. And so a probability score of one would mean that it's essentially a certainty in this context that a minimally qualified applicant would provide a correct response to the item. Whereas a probability of zero would mean that a minimally qualified applicant would essentially have no chance of providing the correct answer. A probability of 0 0.50 would indicate that it's essentially a coin flip, that there's a 50-50 shot that an applicant would answer this item correctly. So now let's see the scores for our remaining subject matter experts. So for subject matter expert number two, you can see this expert's ratings here on this row. For expert number three, we see their estimated probabilities on this row. And then for subject matter expert number four, we see their estimated probabilities on this row, this final row in our data table. So as step two in the Angoff method, we're gonna compute the mean or the average of the probability ratings for each of the items. So first we're gonna to go to the column for item one. And so this column contains the subject matter expert estimated probabilities that a minimally qualified applicant would have answered this item correctly. And here you can see the mean or the average of these four probabilities is 0.79. For the second item, it's 0.71. For the third item, it's 0.61. For the fourth item, it's 0.56. And for the fifth item, it is 0.47. 
as step three in the Angoff method, we're gonna compute the sum of the mean item probabilities that we just computed in step two. So we're simply gonna add up these mean probabilities here. And this is going to give us a sum of the mean item probabilities of 3.13. And this is our cutoff score for this five item selection tool. In other words, an applicant would pass this five item selection tool if they were to score 3.13 points or higher out of five possible points, where each item is gonna be scored as one for correct or zero for incorrect. It's an all or nothing type of format. Conceptually, we can think of the cutoff score as representing the mean of the distribution of selection tool overall score, scores. Now, for step four of the Angoff method, we are gonna imagine that three applicants, this is sometime in the future, have completed the five item selection tool, providing scores for each item, where again, a score of one indicates that they responded correctly, a zero indicated that they responded incorrectly. So for the first applicant, and you can see here their unique identifier is AA1, they scored a 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 on items one, two, three, four, and five respectively. In other words, they incorrectly responded to items one and two because they received zeros there. They responded correctly to item three because they received a score of one there. And then for items four and five, they also responded incorrectly and thus received scores of zero for both of those items. And then we can see applicant AA2, that person responded correctly to the first four items, but incorrectly to the last item. And then for applicant AA3, they responded correctly to items one, incorrect, or rather incorrectly to item one, correctly to item two, incorrectly to item three, correctly to item four, and correctly to item five. So for the next part of this step four, for each applicant, we're gonna compute the sum of their scores across the five items. So for the first applicant, AA1, the sum of their applicant item scores is one because they only correctly responded to one out of the five items. For the second applicant, AA2, the sum of their applicant item scores is four because they correctly responded to four out of five of the items. And then lastly, for applicant AA3, they receive a sum of applicant item scores of three because they responded correctly to three out of five of the items. So for the fifth and final step of the Angoff method, we're gonna apply that cut score of 3.13 that we computed previously based on those subject matter experts, expert ratings of the probability that a minimally qualified applicant would respond correctly to each item. And so we're gonna apply that cutoff score of 3.13 such that an applicant passes if their sum score from this column here is equal to or greater than that cutoff score. So for applicant AA1, they are gonna fail this selection tool because their sum of applicant item scores was one, which is less than that 3.13 cutoff score. For applicant AA2, they are going to pass the selection tool because their sum of applicant item scores is four, which is equal to or greater than 3.13 cutoff score. Lastly, applicant AA3 is also going to fail the selection tool because their sum of applicant item scores of three is less than that 3.13 cutoff score, so again, they fail. So only applicant AA2 passes the five item selection tool when we apply the cutoff score of 3.13 to their responses. If this selection tool were an initial hurdle within a multi-hurdle selection system, we would pass applicant AA2 onto the next selection hurdle. If this selection tool were the last hurdle within a multi-hurdle selection system, we would extend a job offer to applicant AA2. And if this selection tool were part of a multiple cutoff hurdle, we would only move applicant AA2 forward if they also pass the other selection tools in this hurdle that had cutoff scores. Because an applicant must pass the selection tool to move forward, they cannot compensate with their performance on other selection tools if they fail this selection tool. And this illustrates why the Angoff method is a non-compensatory approach to informing selection decisions. Here are the references for this video. And to wrap up, as a reminder, in this video, we learned how to use the Angoff method to apply a non-compensatory approach to informing selection decisions.